Hey there, Pisces. Welcome to your reading. This is part two for the week of April 18th. This is part one right here. If you haven't watched part one yet, it is linked up in the description down below. So uh, make sure to check out part one, but we're just gonna clarify through here and see what's going on for you. Uh, with this Adrift in the Shallows card, you have this Leaping Through the Air card. It says a plan you have made is on track. Literally, I titled your first reading a master plan. There you go. <laughs> if you are waiting for something, get to work and stop putting off ideas or projects you are considering. Are you freaking kidding me, Pisces? Uh, that is exactly what you should be doing. Again, you have a master plan. Pieces of the puzzle are coming together. I feel like there are multiple moving pieces to a plan in your life. I can't, like, again, I can't really explain it. I just see, like, multiple things moving around. <laughs> and I feel like these are all parts of your plan, your master plan, your your master Pisces plan. So, and are you kidding me? A fish in the air? That's like you. <laughs> so uh, Pisces, get to work. This is amazing. Uh, with the King of Pentacles, are you kidding me? <laughs> you have the two of cups. I told you in the first reading, this is definitely love. This person that's coming in here, it definitely could be a Taurus. It could be a person who has a lot of Taurus in their chart is what I would say to you here, Pisces. So, you know, definitely wouldn't surprise me if there was like a, a Taurus coming in for you. You know what's really weird? I was uh, I was like watching a movie the other day and I was like, I wonder, and I was like, I found someone very attractive in this movie. And I was like, I wonder what time they are. And uh, Taurus, right? So and normally I'm attracted to Aries, which is weird, but um, you know, I don't know. There you go. It could be like, maybe there's some sort of switch flipping that we're all of a sudden attracted to Taurus. There you go. I'm, I'm bearing my soul to you there, Pisces. But uh, definitely could be a Taurus coming in for you with that two of cups. Uh, it could be any sign. Like I said, they could just have Taurus in their chart, but Two of Cups is a perfect match. I would also say the King of Pentacles, he's working towards like building or leaving a legacy, just like the Ten of Pentacles, like I said. And that Two of Cups could be you and your higher self, and it could be you matching up perfectly with your master plan. With the Six of Swords, you have the Three of Swords. Again, uh, we literally said this in the first reading. I love when this happens. This is definitely flowing with the first part of the reading. Um, Six of Swords is you moving away from something that was a disappointment. So for some of you, I do feel you're coming off of a lot of disappointments, but you're moving to calmer shores. You're moving on to bigger and better things here as far as love is concerned, uh, but also anything. Again, I feel like these could be multiple disappointments where it's like you've had plans that have been broken, could be in business as well, and you're moving on. With the Four of Swords, you have the, I mean, with the Lovers, you have the Four of Swords. There you go. Uh, so definitely, I feel like there is healing going on in your love life in general. So a lot of you who are like looking for love or, you know, if you're looking for something more significant, I feel like there is a healing going on. I feel like some of you have been like hoping and praying for, um, you know, kind of like a healing to happen as far as love is concerned. And I'm not saying like you've given up on love, but I do feel like I kind of feel that feeling of like saying, okay, like I... I'm done. <laughs> and so the Four Swords is good because it could be like some sort of healing or something like that going on for you. Uh, with the Hawk Spirit, you have the Five of Wands and the Five of Wands, a card of conflict and competition. I'm telling you right now, remember we were talking about the little birds uh, chasing you with the Hawk Spirit, right? Little birds chase hawks around, you know, chase hawks around and all that other stuff. And I feel that this could be competition again. So I feel like you could be experiencing jealousy and things like that. Ignore. I really felt that feeling. Remember what I was saying about how maybe you want to keep some of your ideas to yourself. Or I was saying like people don't understand Pisces vision at all, right? So I would be careful of who you share your ideas with. Um, you know, I was listening to a book. I don't remember what book it was, if I'm being honest, but um, you know, basically in this book, they were talking about how, uh, you know, there's a belief that you shouldn't share your goals with people because then, you know, it kind of makes it, it makes it so you feel like you've already accomplished it. So then you never do it. But in this book, they, uh, he, the author was referencing a study where it actually proved that that's not true. You, you want to share your ideas with people who force you to kind of follow through on your ideas, right? <laughs> so you want to find people who hold you accountable if you are going to share your ideas. So, you know, to me, do I, I mostly keep most of my ideas to myself, right? But there are some ideas where if it's, I'm like, if I know that I'm not going to do it or if someone doesn't like push me to do it. So those ideas I share with like my brother who forces me to do things or my mom actually as well who forces me to do things. And if you have people like that who get your ass moving, I would say it might be a good idea to share your ideas with those kinds of people. But I do feel that some of you are rising to new heights. 
The other thing I want to say here is that it's like you're a hawk. You're bigger than the, all the other little birds. And I think you need to realize that if you're entering into an area of life where there's a lot of competition, I always say if something is for you, it's for you. It doesn't matter how much competition there is. It's like maybe you want to be a YouTuber. I always say it's like there's always going to be the next big YouTuber, right? Because there's always going to be someone where if it's for them, it's for them. They, you know, they are meant to do something. And I feel like you need to realize that whatever your master plan here is, you're meant to do it. So it doesn't matter if there's a billion people doing it. It's for you. <laughs> and I think you need to realize that. But you're, you're, you have to step into the energy to make it happen. With the Knight of Swords, you have the Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles is a card of quality work. It's definitely a card like that could represent a missing piece of the puzzle. That's what's popping into my head here. The reason I say this is because the Three of Pentacles, card of quality work. It's like you do a good job, right? He's done a good job. But there's a water triangle right below the fire triangle. Normally, on the Three of Pentacles, there's a fire triangle at the top. And it says there's like a little bit more. There's a little bit more that could kind of really take you to the next level. There's a little bit more there's, that could really kind of amp you up and get you to that, to those like higher heights and whatever it is that you're doing, you know, is what I would say here. Um, so do I have any good examples? No, uh, not really, Pisces. But what I would say is, you know, I feel like there's kind of like that slight edge. There's something that is giving you an edge here. You know, on YouTube, for example, it's like there are a ton of tarot readers, but it's like some of us, you know, get 600,000 subscribers, not bragging, just saying some of us get a lot of subscribers, some don't. And uh, and again, it's, it, it's, it takes time, right? Some of those people that don't have, that have only 10,000 right now, will they eventually reach 600,000? No doubt about it. But it's like, there's some things that I think give this, the higher uh, readers a certain edge. Maybe it's our personality. Again, not bragging here. I'm just giving you an example. Um, you know, personality, maybe it's the equipment, uh, who, who knows what it is, but I feel like you need to kind of discover that edge here, Pisces. And, uh, I, you know, I think a great way to do it is to look at people who are more successful than you. It doesn't mean you're, uh, you know, necessarily copying them, but it could give you some ideas on like what you can do to kind of, you know, uh, increase your edge. Right. And especially in business is what I'm getting here with the queen of wands. You have the, uh, page of swords again, and these two are definitely connected right here. Uh, so, you know, the Page of Swords is going towards the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands is about being bold, being assertive. I do feel like some of you need to kind of work on that. Like, um, you know, showing off in a good way <laughs> is, is what I'm getting here. It's like, again, if you have a business, if you have a YouTube channel, I feel like you need to talk about it more. And again, we're not talking about, I think as a society, it's like we're taught like, oh, you keep your mouth shut, don't share, you know, don't don't brag and like all this other stuff. Like even I'm bad at it, right? I always say I'm not trying to brag. Like, like who cares what anyone thinks? I shouldn't even say that, right? Um, and what I would say here is I feel like you need to brag. Pisces, you're not doing it to be a jerk. You're not doing it to be uh, not humble or anything like that. But I feel like you need to kind of, you know, the page of swords is about discovering things and it's about discovering how to share, you know, what you do in your life, what you want to do. And it's like, I, I think that, you know, I think that it's a really bad belief, not sharing your successes and things like that, because it's like, you never know, you might share, you might share a success with a person. It might be a good networking opportunity or whatever. And I really feel this need to kind of like let things out or share your voice. Uh, with the fool, you have the three of cups. I mean, literally, what did I say? that you need to get people on your side who do support you. So again, if you have a person in your life who you trust, who can push you or who can motivate you or who can, who maybe you just can come up with ideas with or whatever, I feel like that would be a great idea. I also do feel this could be part of love coming in for you. And I feel like you could be meeting someone through friends. Uh, Three Cups to me is very specific. It's like a card of meeting someone in the community. So uh, number one, I would encourage you to get out if you're looking for love. Uh, even if you're not looking for love, you might be like socializing and you might meet a person uh, through a social opportunity. And I feel like that would be very good for you. Uh, at the end here with the cobweb and the flute, you have this V for victory card. Love it. It says victory in some endeavor. Amazing. <laughs> and you have the September card. So, you know, the real victory could be in September. That makes perfect sense because, um, again, in October, uh, Jupiter will be retrograding back into Pisces. And yes, I understand that this card says September, but it doesn't matter. Astrology, it's not like the universe, as I always say, the universe doesn't wear a watch, right? It's like not like the universe is like, oh, gotta, gotta wait till October for Jupiter to move back into Pisces because that's what the watch says, right? That's not how it works. And so what I would say here, 
is that I feel like there could be a victory, a major victory around the September timeframe. But again, you're working towards your master plan here clearly in your reading. And I feel like things could really be shaping up in that uh, September timeframe. I think you're going to have victories all along the way. It's not like you're waiting until September. I just think that's like when everything is kind of really going to start solidifying and coming together. But you need to work on it now. And again, I feel like you will have victories now. So love it. Uh, with the Queen of Cups, you have the Six of Wands, another card of victory. Six of Wands is a card of victory, success. It's a card of excellence as well. Remember what I said about like the slight edge, you know, I, like I, with that Three of Pentacles. It's like I think some people, you know, I see it all the time. I've talked about this as well on YouTube. It's like I've seen people on YouTube who do tarot readings. And it's like, we all do basically the same thing, but it's like, what what is the difference? I don't know, I'm asking you. <laughs> but, but what I would say here is I feel like the Six of Wands is a card of like having that slight edge, the slight difference. It is a card of jealousy as well. Again, I really feel like you need to not give energy to the haters, right? Or people who are jealous or anything like that. Six of Wands, normally there's a person who's in the background over here and they're like side-eyeing the person on the horse, right? They're jealous of their success. But I really feel Queen of Cups is a very specific card. Queen of Cups says it is critically important where you put your energy. So it's like if you're giving energy to those people, um, then it's probably gonna mess up your victory. So don't even pay attention to it. With the uh, Page of Swords, you have the Six of Pentacles. Love it. Two sixes. I love two sixes. Two sixes to me is is kind of like you being on the right path. To me, it represents just being on the right path when you get two sixes. Six of Pentacles is like planting seeds towards success. Uh, a lot of experimentation energy here, I would say. You know, you know, Page of Swords, Six of Pentacles. It's like if you plant a bunch of different seeds in a garden, you're experimenting. You have to take care of them all so they grow. But it's like some things might grow better than others. And I feel like that's how you need to look at this. Um, the Six of Swords. You know what my problem with the astrology is? Not really a problem. Actually, I think it's amazing, really, is all the energy we had in Capricorn. We had a ton of energy in Capricorn. And I think sometimes, again, people think like, oh, the, the energy is left. We're not dealing with it anymore. It's like, no, you're going to be dealing with that energy for the rest of your life. It's like the whole point of the planet is moving through Capricorn. It's like, teach you lessons. It's like, did you learn those lessons or not? And the whole point of that energy is like the 80-20 rule, uh, as far as I'm concerned. You know, Chris is crappy astrology here, um, but I, I I think that that energy taught us the 80-20 rule, like the 20% the that gives us 80% of our results. So it's like if you're doing a lot of experiments, trying a bunch of things in business or love, it's like you're waiting for the seeds to sprout, but it's like what things grow faster than everything else? What grows better in your life? Is it like, you know, is it one aspect of your business does better than the other? Double down on what works and get rid of the rest, right? I feel like that's the Six of Pentacles, really. With that page of swords with the tower you have the page of cups yeah like i said i feel like if love is coming in it's very much a surprise it could be a scorpio as well with the uh, tower card by the way and also that queen of cups i mean really it could be any water sign coming in for you or it could be uh an earth sign like i said or a taurus but uh you know it could be a scorpio as well with that tower card uh page of cups is like a you know, an admirer, someone who's interested in you. So <laughs> I feel like it's like a little bit of a surprise. I, I read a long time ago that I, like out of all the couples, by the way, uh, Pisces, Scorpio are the ones that get divorced the least, um, uh, that are least likely to get divorced. Pisces, Scorpio together. Is that true? I have no clue. And there could be a million reasons for it, but I'm just throwing it out there. So, you know, that would be interesting. But this is amazing reading. I love this. So uh, thank you for being here, Pisces. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your week.